in Soliana, New City. Welcome back to Sonic Weekly, the only Sonic podcast that is called Sonic Weekly and is about Sonic the Hedgehog and releases on a weekly basis. If you use those three as your guidelines, then that is the show that you're looking for. I am Grant, one of your hosts. With us this week again is Bo. Hi, Bo. This is normally the part when I would say, here we go, buddy, but I have a confession and a revelation to make. And David, I'm very sorry about this. Uh Uh-oh. You know how every week we sign off and we say you should use Podcast Addict to subscribe to the show and (laughs) it's our open source choice for Uh, using podcasts? Yeah. Uh Um, All right, bad news. Uh, Podcast Addict is not open source. It's never never been. (laughs) I, I told you wrong. Oh, it's never been this. over. No, no. The creator says, uh-huh. uh, I'm sorry, but Podcast Addict is not and will not be open sourced. Oh, did they I, email you? No, he oh. said this in 2017. <laughs> oh, I, think, I, 20... I lodged this this fact in my head that Podcast Addict is open source in 2013. Oh, no. It was incorrect <laughs> then. It's just gone it was it was on. wrong. Wow! I repeated it to you, and then now to you know the entire internet who's listening to the show diligently every week and, and right just going wow. around thinking. I've I've never I've never thought to actually look it up. I've never well, thought because you you trust me to provide yeah. you with good information, and I I fell down. I I, <laughs> I did it wrong. That's a real knuckles kind of move. Uh-oh. That's like a that's a thing that. Commander Knuckles in Sonic Forces. <laughs> <laughs> might this do. Might this is worse than Operation of... Big Wave. It, it is. Than, yeah. Uh, and here he is, the the star of the show, <laughs> out from the shadows, into the spotlight. It's David the Lurker. Hi, David. <laughs> Hi, Grant. Hi, Bo. Yeah, wow. Okay, I guess... Uh, I know, I'm, I'm, I'm real big fishing from that, too. That was, yeah. uh, <laughs> like, was a lot to take in. Do, do I still shout it out? Do I say it's there? Well, I still use it. You still use it. It's still... Yeah. So it's it's the your certified number one podcast spot. It's an editor's pick, but it's just not an open source editor's not pick. Not an open so I can say your number one closed source. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of the end of the show. Um, oh, are we there? <laughs> yeah, we're already there. We're this was our this briefest quick episode. Apology yet. episode, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, uh we always mention the email address, which you've been right about that. We did tell you about the right email address. It is Sonic Weekly Podcast at gmail.com. Yeah. And I wanted to point out that not only do we read every email that comes in, we also respond to every email that comes in. And we you know we're we're thinking maybe we'll do a mailbag episode again at some point but we need more we need more content because the the letters that are in there they're good but there's not there's not enough to really sustain a conversation but when you email us and you say hey we would also like to come into your nice warm friendly respectful discord community they also these listeners they'll provide us suggestions from time to time and this episode is going to be inspired by one of those suggestions which we'll get to after the news, what news is there? There's no news. So <laughs> uh, <laughs> we'll talk about many things, but I wanted to just point out that this this thing of, you know, it's been it's it's been on our to do list for a little while to talk about Bubsy and the Sonic imitators. And another thing that's been on our to do list is to really actually review the Knuckles show, which we sort of did. But kind of not also like we we did and we didn't. We we Schrodinger's reviewed it. We both did and did not review the Knuckles show on Paramount. So we're going to aim to do those things as well as. God, I really can't believe that about podcast addict. I mean, that is just like I don't. Right. Do we have to edit every episode now? Do we have to put a disclaimer in the description where we're like podcast (laughs) addict is not. I don't. You know what? Look, let's, I'm just going to look up Podcast Addict just in general uh, right now. It does exist. I promise it's, gonna it's say, a real thing. It's going to say you have a problem. <laughs> yeah, if you're addicted to podcasts. You know, it's like it's going to give you a 12-step Podcast Addict. It is it is a renowned Android podcast app. Does that mean it's it's only on Android? Wow. I think it is only on Android. That's right. Wow. <laughs> it's all these details sponsored what is what is this so so there's podcastaddict.com your number one podcast app on android 
It lists some top podcasts. Serial 4? I didn't realize uh, Serial went back. That's good. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No Such Thing as a Fish, which I, I don't know what that is. I, just another source of misinformation. There are plenty of fish. Right. Right, my brother, my brother, and me. I've heard of I've heard of that show. One of the the they 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 wrote a Sonic. Sonic. <laughs> yeah, they wrote a yeah. Sonic comic. Well, one of them or two of them. Sonic learns to drive, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. that was them. All right, we or got trending pod. Some of them. Yeah, yeah, we got some trending podcasts. Uh, we're not there. We need to fix that. Uh, sponsored. I don't. Does that mean these podcasts paid to be on Podcast Attic or? <laughs> David, I'm going to interrupt you real quick and say, uh, I, we always love hearing you narrate you browsing <laughs> the internet. But I was wondering if, if you could check the Sonic news tab oh, yeah. of Sonic Let's... Stadium just to make sure that we're covering our weekly basis. Right. Bases. Right. Well, basis. I just wanted to point out that you can find Sonic Weekly on Podcast Addict. But, okay. Okay. Right. Right. Welcome to (laughs) the Sonic Weekly News Desk. I am your anchor, David T. Lurker. And top story this week. David T. Lurker. (laughs) (laughs) Right. Wait, so Bo, would you be sports or weather? Can I I do weather? You want to do weather? Right. I I was going to say you want sports or weather. So you get weather. Grant, you get sports. Welcome to the Sega Sports Network. (laughs) Exactly. We're bringing it back. Uh, right. Not much news this week. It feels like this is the calm before the storm, before uh, Summer Games Fest, where it feels like we're, we're definitely going to get some Sonic news. But until then, top story is just, hey, remember Sonic Forces Speed Battle? Maybe you do, maybe you don't. Did you know they just announced their 100th playable character? Tying into the fearless year of Shadow, it's... Shadow? Uh, no. It's... What? No. Now... Now, Shadow's already there. He's been there since day one. It's well, how did it play into Fearless Year of Shadow? Who could it possibly be? Oh, well, who? Maria. Who, oh, it's oh Maria. That would be a good. That would be a good pick. Rouge. I mean, she's part of Team Dark. No. Omega. Uh, uh, no. Somebody with a very clear connection to Shadow. Yes, it's Shadow's best friend, Valiant Tails. <laughs> who? uh it's tails it's tails as a knight even though he wasn't a knight in sonic and the black knight he was a blacksmith in sonic i was gonna and the say black did knight. yeah does he become a knight in sonic and the black knight i've played most of but not all of sonic and the black knight so maybe he becomes a knight at the end I, but he's a blacksmith for most of the game uh he's a blacksmith for all of the game he does not okay. become a knight he does not have okay. an arc right you, you've got your three knights one of them is shadow right um I always forget who's who because I I don't remember all the knights of the round table to begin with, but but right, yeah. it's Blaze, Knuckles, and Shadow. Yes, it is it is them, like whoever they are, Galahad and Lancelot and Goofy. Which, which one's the knight of the wind of the song? Oh That's Sonic. Galwin. Galwin. <laughs> uh, uh right, Sonic is well actually I guess he starts as the Knight of the Wind, but at the end, spoilers, he is the he's King Arthur. So yeah. you know uh yeah it uh i mean it's great they've got a hundred playable characters i don't know if you can unlock them all at once i feel like they some of them are just available until they're not anymore unless they bring them back i think that's the case with some of the movie characters um can you play as wade uh i don't think they've introduced wade they should i would play as wade that would make sense yeah and also you know tom maddie yeah yeah crazy carl like just yeah go go hog wild <laughs> stone yeah, agent stone oh right you don't have game robotic i wonder if they could use jim carrey's face or if they would have to like <laughs> he's close enough yeah that's the big one there's also new clothes at hot topic, hot topic. and uh they look cool man uh take it from me a guy in his mid to late 30s these hot topic sonic clothes look super cool i think they do and also they actually have uh like these like framed posters of like the sonic 3 uh and sonic spinball cover art i was kind of looking at those and being like is it "Hmm." the genesis cover art or the game gear cover art for spinball it is actually the game gear with the good that's adventures that's right and the Sonic 3 is the North American box art, uh, not the weird European one or the very nice Japanese one. Uh, have you ordered any of, of these? There's a whole bunch. There's like a lot. This, 
the stadium article is like here's multiple images you can watch them pose got your sonic racing girls bomber jacket shadow ultimate life form hoodie i guess that ties in shadow symbol is stitched on the back while his name is printed on the drawstring hood comes with moto style detailing on the shoulders and elbows okay Sonic and Shadow split wide leg denim pants. Do you want Sonic on one leg and Shadow on the other? I feel like this yes. is a dream for many. <laughs> yes, 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 it is. But yeah, a, a light news week. It was it, last week. Uh, there was the hope that the movie three trailer might arrive mm-hmm. this week. There was less hope or it was more muted uh, and it still didn't arrive. Uh, no. You know, we're we are recording this. Thursday, it's possible that tomorrow, Friday, uh, ahead of the Memorial Day weekend in the U.S., that it might be attached to the Garfield movie and the Sonic movie trailer might come out right after we finish recording this. That is definitely possible, but it's also possible that it doesn't. I I think there was something floating around on Twitter of like, oh, here's a a, like a marketing or a licensing expo. Uh, It wasn't new images anyway. so. There's no news. We, right. We, why are you arguing with us, dear listener? We told you there's no news, but you keep saying, well, surely there must be something. They're re- not really. Is the, is the IHOP thing still going on? Right. IHOP. I think yeah, that might even be over. It might, right. It's probably over. Yeah. We're in this weird gap where it's like there's no Nintendo Direct. There's no Sony State of Play. There's just kind of we're just waiting. We're waiting for news. We are waiting for news. We're waiting for news. We're waiting for. Hey, I mean, there's other news. Did you hear the Kingdom Hearts series is coming to Steam? Oh, well, (laughs) anyway, speaking of non-Sonics, though. okay, so the the non-Sonics of the world, I don't really know where we're going to go with this conversation because it feels very (laughs) limited. There right. are a lot. We can definitely get into a fun little pattern of listing characters because there's a number of them. Yeah. If they're meaningful is a question that could be answered and pondered. I think it's also a short conversation. No. But what, what meaning can we... But we could list them, right? There are, there are Sonic imitators. Sonic is part of a continuum of mm-hmm. creative expression in the video game mascot uh, genre. However, you know, it's interesting to know when you look at the NES platformer mascots uh, or the Genesis pre-Sonic, um, it's mostly human mascots like Mario. And then Mickey on Genesis is kind of like the major precursor. Sega wanted their own Mickey, created Sonic the Hedgehog. And then after Sonic, there's all sorts of characters with attitude, animal totems, sneakers. They don't necessarily imitate the gameplay. The gameplay of Sonic is very unique still. there are self-conscious imitators now but for a long time that really wasn't the case you would have characters like arrow the acrobat bubsy Mm -hmm. crash bandicoot but they did not play like sonic even though they would express an emote like sonic jazz jack rabbit i think that's another jazz jack rabbit see jazz i've I've never played jazz jack rabbit but i do remember being young on the internet a lot of people going oh if you like sonic you'll love jazz and i looked into it i'm like it it looks like some random platformer where you also shoot i guess i I, that's it yeah yeah which is not sonic like you're lying to me this isn't a sonic game it's it's a running gunner i guess run whatever you want to call it and i mean there's plenty of games like that but is it like contra since i still actually haven't played it (laughs) is it closer to a contra than a sonic oh boy uh i i had it on floppy disk Years and Jazz, years and years Jack ago, Rabbit. I, I remember zero of it. <laughs> oh, well then. Was there also a Math Rabbit? Oh, you're thinking of Reader Rabbit. Thank you. I am yes. thinking of Reader Rabbit. Reader Rabbit and Jazz Jack Rabbit. Very different. Yeah. Um, gotcha. And uh, frankly, kind of offensive that you would confuse them. They're, all, they're both <laughs> rabbits. Like uh, Next, next you'll yeah. be saying like, oh, Roger Rabbit. Yeah, I know like... they all look alike or whatever. Oh, but... goodness. <laughs> Right. Well, Jazz Jackrabbit is green. Reader That's Rabbit, right. I'm going to say Reader Rabbit's like kind of a fuzzy purple, looking maroon. classic storybook kind of guy. Oh, okay. I have no memory of Reader Rabbit. You know, Sparkster, he's, I guess, maybe one of the more successful or enviable or 
like interesting ones, the the Rocket Knight Adventures protagonist, although he's he's kind of Sonic-y. But again, the the game does not play particularly Sonic like. Right. Gex has a lot of Sonic Tood. Bug has some Sonic Tood. Earthworm Jim feels like maybe just far enough away where it's not really a Sonic. Yeah. So I think you gotta like draw the line somewhere. Yeah. I I recently spent some time with Gex for my Rings of Saturn project. And uh you know, I pulled that up and you you've got Gex given all his quips. So he's uh he's voiced by a comedian Dana something. And he if you just leave him, he'll he'll make Dana jokes. Dana Gould, right? Dana Gould, that's it. And those jokes seemed like they were a thousand years old. He's talking about <laughs> uh, Richard Simmons. He's oh talking yeah, they're about, all references, right? They're all. Wow. They were kind of like dated references in 1994, and now they're like super dated references. <laughs> yeah, you know, I've Gex seemed. I'm, I remember being fascinated by the concept of Gex as a kid, like in that era where I guess the Saturn exists, and I saw Gex. I I forget. I, I saw a demo of Gex on. Was it was it on like the 3DO at some point? Like it was. Gex was an or, originally a 3DO. Originally the 3DO, game, right? That's right. I remember. Wasn't he the 3DO mascot? I even no. He he was kind of a mascot for Crystal Dynamics, who were later more associated with IDOS. I remember for at least like thirty seconds, I longingly looked at a 3DO and wished that I had it so I could play Gex. <laughs> <laughs> I I remember having a similar longing, and it was probably just like one magazine ad, an article. That, well, it, that did well, they that. were like heavily advertised. Like every magazine had a lot of Gex ads, and then a lot of ads for. Enter the Gecko, the next game. Right. Well, you know what they say in advertising, Gex sells. <laughs> yeah, I think that's right. I think that's um, uh, exactly it. Or like yeah, that's one good. Is that, is that the tagline for the new collection? Because we are entering the gex Is that what it's being called? <laughs> uh, the... <laughs> yeah. There, there is a Gex rem, uh, tr- remastered trilogy coming out, unless it's already out. Uh-oh. I don't want to get those Gex heads mad. Uh we're already on thin ice with the misinformation, so... Right. <laughs> Wait, why is Google giving this to me in a different language? Um, this isn't helpful. <laughs> oh, yeah, Google also became terrible. Isn't it weird that, like, nothing works anymore and everything is just really, really bad and you can't, like, rely on anything? The, even <laughs> even the Sega Dreamcast. I, I've got to replace my Sega Dreamcast again, dear listener, for the, the same reason of the disc reader, the laser. It's always going out. And they're like, oh, you should just, you know, you evol- you have to evolve past that. You got to get the SD card and the the uploader. You have to like get around to do the emulation. But I don't know how. <laughs> right. Okay. So I guess I, I'm I'm looking at Wikipedia just as it was announced in July 2023, but it still doesn't give me a date. So I guess it's not out yet. But you know, maybe I'll pick up some some Gex. I okay. While we were also looking, I I, I searched. In Google, even though it's broken, for a list of Sonic clones, and I found a post here from seven years ago on r slash Sonic the Hedgehog called a comprehensive list of Sonic quote unquote clones. So here's a few names we'll throw out. Uh, at the bottom, they do mention Sparkster, Rocket Knight, but they 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 when it's too it deviates too much for me to count it as one. So hmm, right. interesting. They mentioned Jazz Jackrabbit. But here at the very top is a game called Kid Chaos, which I know nothing no. about. No. Oh, you, you know Kid Chaos? I don't, but I, oh, okay. I like then, Chaos Emerald, so it's like, oh, well, okay. Uh, kid sounds like a human. A human, ki- yeah. Well, it goes to a YouTube video, which I could click and see if it, oh, this, this video is two hours and 12 minutes long. Sorry, kid. Uh, <laughs> and then after that, is Zool and Zool 2. I don't... Mm. Which... Zool is for sure a Sonic. No question yeah. there. Zool the wants pose, to be... The posing, everything about Zool. Z-O-O-L, Zool. Which sounds like yeah. a brand like chewing tobacco. Uh, <laughs> terrible name. <laughs> terrible, terrible name. Uh, okay, Kid Chaos is a kid. That's good. Um, oh, and it was previously known as Kid Vicious, which is a much better name, so they must not have been able to use it for some reason okay so uh, let me see if we let's see if we can guess who's on this list let's see if we can 
one character I was wondering if they're Sonic like because their eyes suggest yes, uh-huh. but their status suggests no. Is Diddy Kong? Mm, Diddy Kong wow. is Diddy Kong a Sonic? Oh, well, Diddy Kong isn't even brought up in the discussion on this list. I <laughs> I don't know. I wouldn't. I I guess I don't think of Donkey Kong as being a Sonic clone. No, I- Diddy is just. I don't think you can just say any platformer is a clone. Donkey Kong for sure is not. I mean, maybe they wanted to tap a little bit into the tude. I mean, Donkey Kong does. He seems more extreme. Uh, does he? Is he more extreme? He's not very extreme. I was going to say they gave him the yeah. the tie, but he already had that that necktie. Right. Yeah, I think I think Diddy has like a '90s tude about him, but because a he's a sidekick and because he's a derivative, mm-hmm. he sort of doesn't really fit in that in that sonic mold like you you've got a couple of different tiers of how close they are to being sonic clones and who's who's like the most clone like zool for sure is up there in in one of the top tiers bubsy i guess i guess is there but bubsy doesn't have sneakers no (laughs) he just has a shirt he does have a shirt bubsy to me is like i i feel like though that is the number one sonic clone i mean the the yeah. original designer yeah. of bubsy in the game went as far to say like i played sonic and went i want to make my own like it doesn't get more <laughs> derivative than that yeah he the original game focuses on the speed but also the controls are not great and he dies immediately all the time it doesn't have mm-hmm. the ring mechanic and without the ring mechanic you can't really do sonic and so bubsy just becomes incredibly hard and frustrating yeah and popular because there's been how many crash or how many uh bubsy games there's like six of them i think Th- there are yes there, there's bubsy bubsy 2 uh fractured furry tales which is on the uh jaguar uh bubsy 3d of course and then it went into remission and there, there, there was uh, the woolly strike back <laughs> he went into remission he went into remission yeah bubsy, bubsy is the cancer yeah, yeah. So. <laughs> right. Wooly Strike Back, and then there was a another one after that, and I can't think of what that game's called. That's good. I'm having inten- intense deja vu. Like we've talked about this three or four times before. We we may we've have mentioned uh, Bubsy 3D before. I I guess it's really just the first Bubsy that wants to be like a Sonic game. Bubsy 2 has different gameplay. Bubsy 3D is something. Uh, <laughs> well, well, speaking of the ring mechanic, you know what game? just takes it is croc legend of the gobos oh and so that game is very not fast it's kind of slow and plotting and depending on what kind of controller you have even more slow and plotting but it does have you got your crystals you got to collect them they're all around if you have one you're good if you don't have one and you take a hit you're dead and it's funny because croc croc wasn't croc originally pitched as a yoshi game right i think that's right and i think like Nintendo kind of screwed Argonaut there. Like they said, oh, we're like, we're going to help you with this stuff. And here's our game. And they're like, oh, yeah, hey, these are great ideas. Yeah, we're going to do our ideas. And uh, your game is not coming out. So good luck with that. Right. So even though it's it's not, it, Croc is definitely not Sonic gameplay. They're definitely some inspiration. You know, it, it's funny that like the re mechanic wasn't stolen more in the past right and it it was almost like not in sonic one right like naka panicked late in the game and put it in right yeah it was something that wasn't initially there and even just like getting hit and the exploding rings like i think that was added pretty late as well yeah like and and i feel that the rings is very much like the defining like that's what sets sonic apart from every other platformer so it's the speed it's the terrain and it's the rings Right. Well, and I think it's like a philosophy for life. It's like if you've got one ring, you can hang on. Yeah. All you got to do is know what your ring is and hang on to that. And uh, you know, that that's that's a life lesson you can take from Sonic. One ring to rule them all and 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 you should have put one a ring, ring to on keep it. Going. Yeah. You should have put a ring on it <laughs> and ring around the rosy Amy rosy. What a rascal. <laughs> okay, so did we get any of the uh, Croc Crash? Didn't say much about Crash besides his name, and like mm-hmm. obviously that the 3D game and you know, kind of came out before there was any real Sonic 3D. But they did start calling that game 
Sonic's ass. That was like their <laughs> yes. original name for it. Yes, yeah, so that was the the, the code name. Uh, <laughs> all right, it, it is that that quest of we're going to do the uh, the the Sonic killer. But I mean, like when they made Bubsy, did they really think this will dethrone Sonic? When they made Arrow the Acrobat, did they go this this is what's going to to ruin Sega? Everyone's going to want to play as this acrobat. I think like some corporate executives. Yes, yes, they're like, guys, we got this. We are going to be number one. We got <laughs> Arrow coming out this quarter. We're we're hoping for strong sales. Yeah, that makes and, sense. Yeah, cross our fingers, get get the merch lines going. He's got two cartoons. We are we've got zero. How, he's he, like, <laughs> he's already got like three games out. People are you know we're probably feeling the pressure of how far ahead they are. Like, how are we ever going to keep up with Sonic? We're going to have to. Just wait a generation, and then oh. he'll just go away on his own. He'll play himself. Yeah. Okay, I guess there there is one we haven't mentioned yet, which I always forget about, but it exists. I haven't played it. I don't know if anyone here has played it. Th- this one, it well, okay, here's a hint. The title screams, this is the 90s and we are attitude. Please look at me. Any idea? No? Okay. Hmm. Uh, <laughs> gosh. This game is ruined. Uh, <laughs> Rot- rad. Oh, 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 oh. Is it the fucking possum? Is it uh, awesome possum? Yeah. Awesome yeah. possum. Awesome possum kicks Dr. Machino's butt. Yes. Right. How could we forget awesome possum? Right. Well, I think it's probably pretty easy to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we do it every day without we, even thinking about it. Yeah. It. It really wants to be. It want. I think it wa- it wants to be Sonic. It wants to be. I mean, Doctor Machino. Like that's just Doctor Robotnik. It's almost parody, right? I wonder. Maybe. If, like, I wonder if they claim, like, oh yeah, we're just having a a good parody time, or do you think it was like? I've never looked into the history of of Awesome Possum. Well, while you open up that website, let me ponder this out loud. Yeah. Why don't we see this happening more? Like Sonic inspires a lot of clones, it seems. But what about a cartoon character that's more contemporary uh, in its creation, like uh, like a Bluey? Are there a bunch of Bluey clones? Are there a bunch of like, maybe, or like Paw, Paw Patrol, I guess? Or uh, what's like another, like newer, are there imitators of those? I don't know. I Like I'm... I'm immersed in children's media to some extent, and I I don't see like direct imitators there, right? Everybody's kind of got their corner. Right. You've you've got uh Peppa Pig right. on the one hand, and you've got Bluey on the other. Yeah. And and then what's in the middle? I don't know, is Maisie still a thing? <laughs> no, I think it's like Daniel Tiger. Okay. I, yeah. I remember Maisie being a mouse and and I remember uh Maggie and the Ferocious Beast. That was a kid's show when we weren't kids, but I guess before you had kids, so that just dies on the vine. I just like the name and the theme song. There has to be like probably some random bluey ripoff, but it just doesn't nobody knows about it, nobody cares. Yeah, I think with the the nineties Genesis you know, the Sonic clones being in that same generation or two, it was just kind of like a open Wild West of like, oh, maybe maybe we can make a quick buck off of this trend in the same way that there was. I guess maybe to answer that prompt would be like, ugh, some people are going <laughs> to like really dislike this. But like in the way that to me, Digimon seems like it's a pokey like a Pokemon clone, which maybe that's not true. I don't know if that's it true. It seemed I, like I that at the time. It, it sure time, seems I, like... I, I, if yeah. you didn't know better, you would think. Right. But technically, Digimon came out before. Wow, Pokemon. that's amazing. Anyway, yeah, the Digimon concept, like the the little um, Tamagotchi stuff, like that came out first, and that was before Pokemon. It was kind of in the air, I guess. Yeah. Because Digimon put it there? No, because you had your like screensaver fish tanks. You had your yeah. Tamagotchis. You had okay. your... Nightopians in Nights into yeah. Dreams. It's it's kind of evolving toward that way. No pun intended. Pokemon evolve, right? Here you go. Uh, Bo, have you ever heard of a show called Chip Chilla? No, but is it starring a chinchilla named Chip? 
Well, it it definitely stars a chinchilla uh, who who looks uh, like Bluey. That's uh, there you go. <laughs> U.S. cartoon chinchilla is accused of copying Bluey, and fans Ooh. are outraged. Oh yeah, that's okay. pretty. That is pretty outrageous. Yeah, <laughs> that that is essentially just Bluey, but not not a dog. So yeah, there is a Bluey ripoff. There you what go. What about uh, what about Izzy, the mascot from the Olympics '96? <laughs> Blue alien, blue alien, big grin, yeah, big eyes associated not with an, rings, had a associated platformer. with rings. <laughs> it's not a platformer, was it a pl- I don't remember, maybe yeah, it's not. I believe it I, my only knowledge of it is like one magazine ad, and you know what those ads were like in the 90s. Oh, yeah, it's hard. Tiny I just assume stuff. it's a platformer because what else, what else would it be? I don't think it was yeah, like right. an Olympic game where hey, do sprinting oh. and <laughs> now do hurdles, <laughs> like uh. It's no decathlete. <laughs> they should have just made Sonic the mascot for the 96 Olympics, right? It would have made a lot more sense. Yeah. Then, of course, there's the, the you know, the modern conscious imitators like, what, gosh, the, the Electric Jester, Spark, Spark the Electric yeah. Jester. Right. Spark right? the Electric Jester. And I guess Freedom Spark Planet. the Electric Jester. Yeah. And Freedom Planet by the Sea. Right. Every, <laughs> yeah. Th- those Something. are the two, the two big ones. But, I mean, they wear their inspiration on their sleeve it's like we grew up with sonic we love sonic we are going to bring that to our own you know modern it's 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 different than the uh trend tracer of awesome possum it it uh it comes from a more pure source yeah the sonic fandom is nothing but pure that's right that's (laughs) the the main word i would associate with it yeah (laughs) it's it's always been that way it's, it's yeah. very happy uh, <laughs> yeah but i mean like and i guess also because it has like because it's not scrambling to try and compete with something that's that's right in the moment like freedom planet is able to, to spend time to to figure out like hey, we can make a game we don't have to worry about competing with sonic 4 <laughs> 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 the, the real sonic killer y- yeah <laughs> sonic 4 sonic 4 yeah, I, 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 I mean, Spark, the the uh, the developer, they they were the ones who made before and after the sequel, Sonic before and after the sequel. Yeah. So like, very much, yeah. But but he's he's gone his his own way. Like it's still very much like Sonic's in its roots. But you know, I wouldn't say. I mean, I guess just like a lot of those 90s games, like it wanted to emulate certain aspects of Sonic, but none of them were like 100% straight. This is just a Sonic game where I do feel that after Super Mario Brothers came out, since platformers were new, some games were literally just, I guess we'll also move forward and jump and there'll be a couple power ups and one of them you shoot people yeah. like it. It didn't. There was a lot of experimentation in the NES era, but we we have forgotten as a collective the uh <laughs> the early pure mario clones while you know with sonic it's like sonic was already like how do you make a platformer different and it was able to innovate and so then you just have a lot of clones where it's like we we, we try to emulate certain aspects be it the style be it part of the gameplay but that we can also like steal or borrow, not steal, let's be nice, borrow heavily from Mario and from Bonk and from other just platformers of the day. I think that's exactly it, is like they were already going to make platformers and then now they knew how to make a character that might be appealing to somebody at Blockbuster or right. wherever they're browsing for video games. Are there any of these characters that... Well, you know, is there a Bubsy podcast? Can we cross over with like the Arrow, the Acrobat fandom and just sort of, like, is there anything we can learn from these other characters other than it's just like, this is just sort of what market economics looks like when it's like video game, like it's not any deeper than it appears or is the secret of the universe here? And like, you just got to like decode it and, uh, and then it'll tell you how to find eternal life somewhere. I like to think that most every game somebody has like fond memories of it and I, I you know i think there's games that it's nobody's favorite game but there's a lot of games of like oh yeah my older brother had that one it's the only one we had at 
our father's house and so we played all of it and we played it over and over again and you know it may not be good i may not want to revisit it but i, I still have the fond memories of it <laughs> and I, I you know i think at best some of these bubsies and awesome possums can aspire to that that's exactly it i mean i i was drawing bubsy and gex alongside sonic in my eight or 10 year old or 30 year old, you know, <laughs> amateur comics that I was drawing and they seemed like at, you know, not maybe, you know, they, they seemed in league with the Ninja Turtles or other sort of kid characters, but it's just, I guess it's not a huge mystery why Sonic endures, but it is kind of like you just, I don't, eh, it's like I said at the beginning, I don't a hundred percent know where to take this conversation other than like, yeah, I have some fond memories of playing Bubsy with my brother. <laughs> Bubsy's just a dumb character. Well, like there, there is something to Bubsy. Oh, go on. You know, going back to something we discussed on this podcast, like what do you do with a game like Swagman? Like Swagman is probably nobody's favorite game, <laughs> but probably somebody remembers playing it with their brother and, you know, having a nice time with it. And right. there's no Swagman Discord. I looked. Um, <laughs> is there a Bubsy Discord? But there is a Gex Discord. I don't. Whoa! I don't know okay. about the Bubsy one. I did join the Gex one. I did join the Clockwork Knight one. It's, you know, it's, uh, shout out Clockwork Knight fans. Are there any characters that have become associated with, uh, you know, terrible like toxic elements or so? You know, like for example, at one point I became. Uh, I was like remembering the old McDonald's ads with the moon guy. Yeah, uh, Mac sure. Tonight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mac tonight. And I was like, Mac tonight. That, that was funny. You remember Mac tonight? And then you look into it and it's like, oh, Mac tonight is a huge symbol for white supremacists or something. It's <laughs> like, oh, no. What what happened, Mac tonight? We lost Mac tonight. <laughs> I think so, Earthworm Jim maybe also in this. Or well, maybe his, creator, Toe Jam and his, cre yeah. his creator. It's in a weird place because like, the owners of Earthworm Jim, they they tease like, oh, we're making a new animated series, which hasn't been mentioned since they teased it. <laughs> I remember very specifically somebody tweeted because the the Twitter account was like, oh, I am Earthworm Jim. Please talk to me like I am Earthworm Jim. And so somebody, you know, tweeted at them and asked like, oh, what do you think about trans rights? Uh, yeah, so I he did say, this. oh, trans yeah, rights yeah. are humans' rights. And it, so it's like, oh, we're we putting that in stark contrast with some of these statements. Yeah. Of, of Earthworm Jim's creator trying to, to separate and you know I mean I still like the Earthworm Jim games even if I am well you know not a uh, fan yeah right well because I sure. mean because it's, it's and not it was bigger than one guy it, it, too. Was, it was like it, it wasn't it was, just one it was guy. a cartoon it, it was a toy it, line there yeah was a lot like going on. was he even involved in the cartoon I don't know and like so he designed the character, but he didn't make the game he didn't program it he didn't write the music I mean I yeah. guess maybe it's a mystery who did uh Tommy Tallarico and friends wrote the music, <laughs> uh, but you know, so there, there is still like, Oh, I had very fond memories of that. And, and also thinking about, you know, people have fond memories of Harry Potter and, and that franchise and how it's like, Oh, but now the creator, Jacob Rowling and, and her beliefs and, and such. And it like, it makes it more complicated because she directly benefits financially, but Doug to Naple, as far as I know, doesn't, uh, from any sale of the game or if they made a sequel. So if you play Earthworm Jim 2 on Nintendo Switch Online, it's not I don't I don't think he's getting him in the same way that buying right. Harry Potter toys is Yeah. For, at least I, I don't think so. Because I, I, I think from in that brief moment when they were gonna make Earthworm Jim four for the uh Amico, <laughs> it was like they had to license that character. So even though they were gonna bring back the entire original development team, they didn't own it. And because they didn't they didn't do whatever in, in time, uh, they they lost the, the rights to make it or something. I, I could be misremembering that, but like clearly nobody who made Earthworm Jim one owns Earthworm Jim. So you get into that other weird place. But I mean, like, that's a whole debate that you could dive into. Yeah, let, 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 let's not. Where was Spyro on January 6th? Yeah. <laughs> But we can we can sidestep nimbly back over to the question of yes, yes Spyro, where were you exactly? <laughs> no, uh, okay. So, which of these characters do you think would be the cheapest to license, and then what should we do with them? Like, is it Rocky Rodent? Is it Awesome Possum? Is it because um, Bubsy seems like that's a license that gets passed around pretty freely, almost like it's yeah. a new developer each time. I think you need money though. I mean, I don't know how much it costs to license Bubsy. I think you just 
can. This is a reason. This is a reason to get to start a Patreon, dear listener. We're going to fund Bubsy. We're going to make the true Bubsy four because, like, the Woolly Strike Back, that's a clone of another game. We're going to go back to the source. We're going to make Bubsy four in the style of Bubsy one. One hit yeah. kills. Bubsy mania. Collect a lot of yarn. Uh, well, I mean, you collect yarn in all of them, but you know. Did Bubsy inspire? any characters is conquer of conquer's bad day inspired <laughs> by Bubsy. i got to maybe a little a little conquer they was both def- have no pants and they have jackets or shirts and they're pretty inappropriate and they are not the same animal but they are they can both be found in your neighborhood cats and squirrels i think kind of the, the lazy thing to do would be to license like several of them and to put them in a fighter but you know, ah, yeah. Oh. What what would be better? You could. What, you can't call it all stars. What would you call it? <laughs> <laughs> They're all at the bar. That's what they are. Uh, yeah. The 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 best available fighting game. <laughs> um. Yeah. Well, you could bring back Clay Fighter because Clay Fighter had Booger uh, Man, Booger Man, Earthworm, and Earthworm Jim. Jim. There you go. Yeah. So it just opened the door. And, and yeah. so play versions of Bubsy and Rocky Roden and Awesome Possum and Arrow the Acrobat. And we'll th- throw in Sparkster and maybe with exclusive DLC, like you can have Sonic the Hedgehog in the background, like going, wow, I sure was lucky <laughs> that this didn't become my legacy. We mentioned Rocky Roden a few times now, and right. I really want to talk about Rocky Roden okay, because I think on. Rocky Roden came out on Super Nintendo. I think it was a rental at my best friend in elementary school. Like we were, I was over there one night, and then like they're like, "Oh yeah, we got Rocky Roden." I was like, "What the frick is Rocky Roden?" And then they plugged it in, and the first level is you're like running through like a highway on some cars or something, Whoa. and he looks like the Tasmanian Devil, but I think he's wearing a basketball jersey. <laughs> That's my memory of Rocky Roden. That's your... <laughs> that was it. Yeah. Did Did you like it? I don't know. I mean, it was colorful and it sticks in my memory. So for those reasons, I want to say yes. This positive, warm, vague feeling means something, but I don't know that it does. What What's in the mix here? Like, does bug count? The eyes say yes. He's not an animal. A bug's not an animal, but it to- totally like, I mean, he races Sonic and he does. Right. And like all the magazines at the time too, were like, oh, this is the new Sega mascot for this generation. Right. What about like a, a Tomba? Yeah, you know, it's a caveman, right? Yeah. I think he's actually like culturally appropriated of native uh, oh. folk tales from Okinawa, although the developers may be from Okinawa. So I don't know if it's. So it, Right. I mean, if if they're just uh, culturally appropriating their own culture, I guess that's fine. That seems fine. Yeah. Right. Like that's right, not. Well, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, they're not cave. They're they're no. They're not a caveman. I just I don't know. No, it's there like are some like... platformers that are cavemen. I forget Bonk you mentioned, but there's other ones uh, too. Chuck Rock. Chuck Rock. Chuck Rock was a caveman. Yeah. Um, and then Chuck Rock Two, son of Chuck. I can't forget. How about Johnny Bazooka Tone? I think that's actually one where. Not even anybody has the fond memories of playing it with their brother. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, I'll, some of these are just news to me. Like I don't know. It's a, uh, it's a PlayStation Saturn kind of thing. David, who have we missed from the list? Oh, right. Well, because I, I was looking at this list, it doesn't feel like a definitive list. It was more like, "Hey, I've wrote some. Can you think of any?" What about Yo Noid? He comes out before Sonic. He and is he's before totally Sonic. Different. Uh, the other ones on this list that we didn't bring up. Something called Wiz and Liz. <laughs> I beg your pardon. <laughs> uh, I think that's illegal in several states. Yeah. 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 Uh, right. I remember one time I was on a road trip no. with a friend and they just really needed to go. And I was like, uh, we were because we were like in a very, very small town in the middle of the night. They went. I really need to go. And I was like, I don't know if you should, because like right behind us was like a police car had parked and they had they were just standing in the in a gas station i don't know why we didn't go to the gas station but it said they just ran out of the car (laughs) went behind a building you know relieved themselves hop back in we drove and i was like wow like that officer was like 50 yards away they could have caught you in midstream 
Yeah. Uh, who else is missing from our Wiz and Liz? Wiz and Liz. Wiz and Liz. Blaze. Uh, is Blaze? A, Blaze? It's a, an Amiga game. Uh, don't know. Don't know. Don't know Blaze. Something called Socket slash Time Dominator is on this list. Yeah, I was, I've, heard, I've heard of Socket. Okay, you've, you've heard of Socket. They, they talk about like the newer ones. A Tin Head. Oh, you know, I own that game, but I've never played it. Me too. It's not good. Oh, okay. I have played it. Yeah, it's um, you know, and, it's and, fine. Right. So here's an, another list where it's a lot of the same stuff, and then somebody goes Samari, which I think is cheating. Yeah, that's... <laughs> and and then they they're like, hey, what about the movie Hedgehogs from 2016? And I'm like, it's not a video game, but it really it does want it does want to be Sonic. I watched that movie. It makes no sense. Yeah. It's yeah. very disjointed, and I. But they really, it's about a hedgehog, and his the, some of his spines are blue, but he's mostly brown. And uh-huh. it it's yes, it's a it's a Chinese animated film. I think it's based on probably some Chinese folktale, and it does feel like there's about forty minutes missing that would make it make sense. I have a question for yeah. you guys. Also, I, I'm remembering that we forgot to talk about Knuckles. We can do that. Uh, <laughs> yes. Uh, but, but I have a question for you guys. Okay, so if it turned out that one of us, one of the three of us, it was like, oh, your dad created Bubsy. Do you think, so imagine that's you. Your, your dad is the Bubsy creator. Okay. And you're st- you're, but you're still you. Do you think the other two would be impressed and be like, like are you a Nepo baby? In the Sonic podcasting world, if your dad created Bubsy, or are you like a pariah where it's like, oh, his dad, it's like, you know, <laughs> your dad being a war criminal Bubsy? or something. Yeah. Uh, I think it depends on what you say about Sonic. If you're like, my dad made hmm. Bubsy and Bubsy's cooler than Sonic. No, you're still you. You're still you're still, you're still, still you. But I guess maybe you. you have a more complicated relationship with Bubsy. Right. It's like, well, one day Bubsy left to get milk and he <laughs> just never came back. <laughs> um, and I mean, to be fair, I think the creator even has a complicated relationship with Bubsy. He made the first one, wasn't involved in the second, worked on mm. the third, realized mm. halfway through this game is going to be really bad. Because I, I think Bubsy was pitched to be sony's mascot like when they went hey we're gonna make bubsy 3d sony do you want this to be your mascot and then they were like well we have other plans which became you know crash and spyro but bub they really thought they were going to define the 3d platformer and the mario 64 was announced and then they went oh no this is going (laughs) to look so primitive next to to this and so they just did it didn't um it didn't right and i think the creator he he uh, passed away not that long ago uh, sadly cats in the cradle yeah so I mean he had I don't know if he was like oh yeah I really want to make Bubsy 4 one day I me, you know there must have been some fondness there he came back for 3 um, but I, anyway you're dodging the question so yeah, how, I am how do you it. I think it's okay I think I don't think you could get any like free drinks out of it like no yeah so you don't think you don't think you're a nepo baby? Yeah, you laughed at. You get a little laughed at. A... You get a little ribbed, and then they're like, "Okay, come over here," but you're still paying for your own dinner. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You're not right. you're not able to dine out on on dad created Bubsy. No. <laughs> Maybe mm. you go back in time to '93. Al- Accolade will. Uh, yeah. Pay for dinner. So as a kid, you're like, "Wow, all dinners must be free." Of course, when you were a kid, you think all dinners are free anyway. <laughs> also, okay, so you're a kid in the 90s. Your dad created Bubsy. On the playground, people are like, Mario's better. No, Sonic's better. And then you're like, what about Bubsy? <laughs> they're like, fuck you, kid. We know your dad created Bubsy. And they start throwing rocks at you. <laughs> you have to. I think right. that would be. I guess that would change you. So it would. You would be a different person. If, right. You probably would around you more would than rip, a military kid. No, you would rip it all though. <laughs> You would you yeah. you would rebel and be like yeah dad Bubsy sucks and then like mm. in college you would meet like 
kids who have like way worse parents you'd be like oh you know dad wasn't so bad you're like bubsy so like kind of cute and it was early platforming days i didn't know what a 3d platform was supposed to be and, <laughs> true. And, yeah Do and you then, eventually take over like, the family business well no you like keep wanting to bring it up and like have a meaningful conversation about it but it's like never the right time and like now he's gone. Yeah. He's yeah, like, yeah, I didn't, there's so many all. questions. Yeah. I could have asked my dad about Bubsy. It's too late. Yeah. Those secrets are, they die with him. That's right. Bubsy is dead. Un- unless, unless that license is available, in which case, <laughs> we will mercilessly. <laughs> right. I was going to say, you know, maybe years later, you find a dusty journal, you know, in a box of Ooh. your dad's old stuff. A dad it's box. A dad box. Ooh. And in that dad box is a is a is a dad journal that lists the dad development of Bubsy. <laughs> what oh, it's th- like the Dune novels. What do you think? Okay, a prototype cartridge of Bubsy Jazz <laughs> Jack Rabbit. <laughs> in a bundle. <laughs> no, no, no. Which one auctions for the most? Oh, oh okay. Uh hmm. Uh which platform is Jazz Jack Rabbit and which platform I think it's actually is actually a PC or- game? Yeah. yeah the floppy uh, disk of the original floppy disk weren't okay. they eventually ported to like the game boy advance probably i feel like a lot of things were <laughs> i uh, think we discussed it on an episode before but like epic made jazz jackrabbit went that's on right the... because they put those they there's jazz jackrabbit references in Fortnite from time yeah. to time oh um what was the question oh uh i think it's of all of them a bubsy prototype is the most because of all of them, Bubsy seems the most infamous. Other other right. ones, it's like, um, other ones. I I feel like like they exist on their own. Gex is fine. You know, you have your more successful ones like Crash, and uh, like if you really want to say Crash or Sparks or are Sonic clones, which you know that's still I think, uh, the jury's still out on that. But there's a uh, there's a Conquer prototype of uh. What's Twelve Tales was unreleased and then got retooled in the Bad Fur Day, right? Yeah, and right, right. like we know it. Ha- like somebody involved in the development has it and, and like posts stuff about it occasionally. People get so mad that it's like, let yeah, us, let us see it, let us play it. I'll go the other way with it. I think, I think Jazz Jackrabbit would be the one that fetches the highest price, and it would be because it would like the buyer is somebody who's like a dumb guy who's like. Oh jazz! Oh, I, oh, I love Jackrabbit. Oh, Jackrabbit was great. He doesn't know what he's talking about. He's just like, oh, I love this is good. And he pays an exorbitant amount and doesn't know how to listen to him. He's like, oh, it's my favorite. There was supposed to be a Jazz Jackrabbit three. I forget if any of that the prototypes are floating out there, but it was supposed to happen. Bo, do, we, do we want to talk more about this, or do we want to talk a little bit about Knuckles? Because the last time, let's, let's do let's do yeah, some Knuckles, let's, let's right? Because Bo last. Time you were here and we talked about Knuckles, you had I think gotten through episode four, right? That's right. Yeah. So we haven't heard us. your opinion on the finale, the two part finale. Yeah. Well, I, I think my take is in line with yours, which is it's stronger in the first four, like peaking in the fourth episode, and then kind of downhill on the last one, but makes a strong showing in the final minutes. And have you guys watched Kingpin? <laughs> <laughs> didn't didn't see Kingpin. I still the- haven't watched. I have it ready yeah. to go. I was like, I yeah. should watch it. We didn't talk about it last week. And all it this- makes it makes a much better. It does a much better job of making the bowling part mm-hmm. exciting on film. Uh, and it's a funny showdown at the end. But yeah, like Bo just said, like in, despite the Pistol Pete stuff. Well, in addition to what Bo just said, the Pistol Pete stuff is very tedious, but the knuckles action stuff is cool i did think like just a, a couple of observations that w- where else could i possibly make them um <laughs> so number one uh wade's dad is 61 wade is 42 and god damn that guy looks good at 61 like we should all be so lucky to wait to look as good as as pistol pete as pistol pete as uh yeah. as uh uh Corey Elwes. Elwes, yeah. Elwes. So that's observation number one. Observation number two, okay, that Wade is betraying Knuckles, but Knuckles was listening in the whole time because we set that up because Knuckles was like giving Wade direction early in the thing. Like, man, they did not earn that reveal 
the beginning of episode six, like Knuckles was like on the bed watching TV. There was no like signs like, oh, I got it. I'm going to go upstairs uh, and then beat the snot out of these bad guys. Like episode five was uh, was. Yeah, we've never we I mean, we have not ever seen Knuckles the Echidna in a hotel room eating Doritos and watching ESPN before. That's a new image that that episode gave to us. Right. I, I guess, is, is that Knuckles learning how to relax? Because I guess that is part of his arc, is accepting his home. And, like, Earth is being his home, which we get at the very end. But, like, it does... Knuckles relaxing and, and eating Doritos and watching TV doesn't seem like a thing that he would do at the beginning of the series, so I don't know at what point he feels okay with it, doing this now. And he's eating Doritos, which is a thematic callback to when he's eating Doritos in episode <laughs> one yes. under the tree and lamenting that Earth does not feel like home to Sonic the Hedgehog. But here he is not in anyone's home. No, he's in a hotel room. Oh, and he's also eating Doritos, but it feels like home because right. Sonic's not around. Well, maybe, and Wade's his family. Maybe Knuckles just likes hotels. If he's been a, a, a wanderer, you know, traveling across the stars looking for the Master Emerald, probably spends a lot of night in hotels. So That's he, true. Yeah. he needs he needs to, to switch it up. He's probably like, oh, you know, Wade, if if Green Hills had more than one hotel, I would feel more at home because I would be able to stay at many <laughs> places like it just to me it was like not at all earned like it should have been he was uh wade was saying like oh i'll go get knuckles or whatever and then like knuckles knows immediately like you're being coerced tell me who has your family or like it was it was out of character right he would have said something yeah because also like if if wade just hands him the ear thing I feel like Knuckles would go, why are you handing me your exactly. ear? Yeah, that would, yes. that would be more in character and funny. I do not understand. And then, and yeah. then oh, but but then you, you're, you're imagining like the terrible version of the show where Knuckles does that. And then Wade just hears. <laughs> uh, he's like, what? Oh, can't have uh, that happen. For the, for the listeners, David, David made a, a, a finger gun gesture. So. <laughs> right. Yeah, I, I guess if over the course of the six episodes, Knuckles did like it, it seemed like he was learning a bit more the, the show itself wants to focus on Wade's journey, which I guess is fine. But but I get but we're also it, Knuckles name is in the show. We do. We should have a little bit more. I, I, I guess episode, he learns to enjoy music. Yeah, that's, that's his arc. He does learn to enjoy music. And I guess he does learn to relax and watch TV with the mom. <laughs> like right. that's where he he, he joins yeah. the chosen people he learns to enjoy music and uh yeah. he can relax and eat Darius. that's it right story. so i i guess episode three is our proof of of character development although watching it it doesn't necessarily occur to you that knuckles is learning things <laughs> until i guess well, that's that's the art of writing that's the mark of good writing that that, that is true if... you, it shouldn't be spelled out to you it should be subtle um but maybe there should have been a scene where knuckles quietly puts an apple uh ear pod ear pod in his ear uh before episode five <laughs> yeah like maybe oh when they're driving like knuckles destroys the radio again and then wade hands him the the sacred uh, I mean, I guess he does use it a little bit. He uses it when he's like coaching he's, it for the yeah, conversation. Yeah, coaching, but there's no sense to be like, "Hey, let's be quiet." I yeah. guess what I'm saying is that it almost makes sense. It almost makes sense. All right, so th- that's five <laughs> and six, and then six. It's fine up until the end, and then you've got the the dramatic finale, which was on repeat in my house for like a couple of the days, just like the last five minutes with the, the flames of disaster great ending scene should have been longer they probably ran out of money but uh it was on repeat because you have a a child i have a six-year-old yeah who's like Uh, thinks the flames of disaster are pretty cool and also it was on repeat in my house for a different reason just because i enjoyed it personally (laughs) uh Uh, i I, so i thought it was cool i really liked the flames of disaster 1994 i would say yeah obviously there will be a knuckles show because knuckles is awesome 
never in a million years would I have thought there's going to be a knuckle show that references Iblis like quite heavily from 06 and right. did not have that on my bingo card at all. That was a surprise. Okay, so earlier we said that I would do sports. Uh, here is the sports uh, recap of the, the Knuckles series. Uh, starts off strong with a win. Uh, we see Sonic, uh, Tails, and Knuckles. We get some good physical comedy gags. We establish the stakes of the series. Uh, Pac, Pachamac. Pet- uh, Pachamac. It's not a bit. Pachamac. <laughs> Pachamac. Uh, is, uh, it makes an appearance. It's a win. So we're all, we're, it starts off one nothing. Episode two, big stinker. No Knuckles. Knuckles is in a cage the whole time. Fantasy sequence. Perhaps it's amusing, but overall, it's a it's not a win. One to one overall on the season after episode two. Episode three, rebound. Oh my goodness, we have uh, Wade's family, and uh, we are learning about Jewish traditions and customs. And Knuckles is embracing it, finding uh, parallels between his uh, echidna past and Wade's family. 2-1. We're up 2-1 now. Uh, and here we go into episode four. Now, there's no Knuckles here. This is the mark of a downfall, mark of a loss. But in fact, it's the best showing of the series with uh, with the, the musical and uh, uh, what's his name? Ever since I've seen that, like even the preview for that episode where Knuckles takes a big pot of coffee and drinks out of it, I, I have that exact same pot of coffee and I just kind of want to like drink. Coffee you should. You're back. you're addicted to coffee, and you can drink uh, coffee pretty intensely. You should absolutely do that. Yeah, um, they- and then we should go see the symphony. Uh, <laughs> okay, so that's up three one. Only one loss. Then after then episode five, t- terrible loss down to three two, and then episode six, I give it as a win. So I think it's a four two overall for the series for the season. Two losses, four wins. Uh, that's above five hundred. That's a winning record. Mm-hmm. That I think knuckles gets yeah i well i think every streaming show is one episode too long no matter how long it is (laughs) if it's a a two episode series it should have been one and it should have been wow and so which one would you cut i would cut five two and five you can you can skip i think i I like two better than five i like two better than one really and i think it's just down to i don't like sonic and tails (laughs) in the movie oh no i don't like tails Oh, sorry, I don't like Tails' model, and I don't like Sonic's voice. Mm. Oh, so if we could swap yeah. them, um, yeah. <laughs> however that works, um, <laughs> Sonic can have Tails' voice, and Tails can look like Sonic. Well, listener, I think we've fulfilled our contract with you. We have talked about the Knuckles series. We've we've heard Bo talk about each episode, David, myself. We have talked about Bubsy, etc. And uh, you should email us, but don't take it from me. Take it from David. Ah, oh, that's didn't right. Do, didn't do any weather, but uh, I got caught in the rain this morning, and uh, I really whiffed on that, too. So. <laughs> well, dear listener, uh, hey, if you got caught in the rain uh, today or yesterday or whenever you listen to this episode, hey, you can know that you were in good company with this yet another episode of Sonic Weekly. That's right. We've reached the end. Maybe the rain's clearing up, the clouds are, are parting, but it's it's night, so you get to see the moon, and you look at that moon and you go, yeah. And that moon, of course, looks back at you. <laughs> it winks and says, hey, did you remember to subscribe to this podcast? And you're like, wait, you're right, moon, I haven't subscribed yet. And you're like, oh, well, guess what? There's plenty of ways you can subscribe to this show, which of course helps us out. You can subscribe with your podcatcher of choice, be it Apple Podcasts, be it Spotify, or, hey, if you've got an Android device and you don't mind using something with code locked up under you know, <laughs> it's Podcast Attic. It, it's Is cool. it open source? Uh, I'm, I'm afraid it's not open source. <laughs> uh, okay, that's good. I don't, I don't like open source. We don't. It doesn't need to be open. You know, it's you, you open your heart, but you, you, you close your code. Lock, put that on lockdown. Um, <laughs> hey, but if you don't even want to use a podcatcher, you can, of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel where these same episodes go up. It's at Sonic-Weekly, and you can uh, listen along. Or if you're watching the video, you see gameplay footage by friend of the show, Jack of Old Games. So it does give you something to look at while you're, you're spending time with us. Hey, uh, you can uh, you can uh, 
uh, not just subscribe, you can uh, give a rating, you can give a review, give us some sweet stars, five stars, if you can manage it. Uh, and if you want to reach out to us, of course, we have our email address, it's sonicweeklypodcast at gmail.com. You send us a line, let us know what's going on. Uh, if you've got some questions, you know, we want to do a mailbag episode, so r- write to us. Give us something to chew on, something to talk about. And you can always get into our Discord server using that email address, ask for the link, and you'll you'll join up, talk to some like-minded Sonic the Hedgehog fans there. Don't just talk about Sonic. And we're there too, you know? Uh, we talk, we hang out, we're having a good time. Hey, we're on we're on Twitter at Sonic Weekly. Eh, it's fine. Uh, <laughs> hey, uh, and of course, uh, I think that's about it, right? Uh, wait, is Smoothie's back or no? It's still Bo. Bo. I it's thought Grant not... was doing this one. It's Grant doing. Oh, you're right. Grant is doing this one. I'm, I'm all over the place. Actually, it might be Jack. Thanks, Jack. Oh, yeah, really? <laughs> <Thanks>. God, <laughs> look. It's either who, it's either gonna be Jack or me. Whoever it. whoever edits this fucking thing, thanks. Uh, <laughs> 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 I think that's it. Thank you, David. Thank you, Bo. Thank you, Jack. Thank you, listener. 